Russell and Julia, your children are an absolute inspiration. They are absolutely lovely. We have two kids, and it's like herding cats sometimes. I cannot imagine what it is like having five children, and they are gorgeous. You know, they are absolute credit to you, and praise the Lord for that. Um, I've been asked to sort of do an introduction on the Beatitudes. I'm of that age now where to see you I need my glasses on. To see any notes I need to take my glasses off. So if I'm doing that I apologise. It's not a nervous twitch. It's purely a sign of age. And um, in part of that introduction obviously it's just the new year. And I'm sure with the new year a number of us have made New Year's resolutions. Um, I know Kim and I often have a discussion of what our mutual New Year's resolution should be. Mine is frequently to be a better husband. Hers is never to be a better wife. But I'm sure each of us at New Year's time think about the resolution we want to be in terms of being better. And my starting point in terms of an introduction to the Beatitudes is, but what's our New Year's resolution for the Lord? Because when we're thinking about the Beatitudes throughout this year, the starting point is being right with God. Making sure we're right with God. And I'll come back to that. Now, one of the things I think a number of you know is we do a Bible study group and a prayer group on a Thursday night, uh, normally at my house. All men very welcome. Ladies, you're welcome as well, except it is a men's group, and so go to one of the ladies' groups. But... What we've been doing over the last year is reading the Bible in a year. And I think we've done pretty well. I think pretty much we've all managed to achieve reading of the Bible in a year. But one of the interesting things about doing that has been the different translations. And it's relevant to the Beatitudes because we were reading the Beatitudes the other night and Richard read from his Bible and it said happy rather than blessed. And I said, I have a problem with the word happy. Because it's quite a shallow sort of human word. Whereas the word blessed means grace. It comes from God. You're blessed. It doesn't mean you're happy. And so when I started to think about that different translation, my starting point was this issue of us all having good days and bad days. Everyone in their life has good days and bad days. Everyone in their life has good periods and bad periods. For some of us, the bad periods go on a long time. And the good periods are difficult to find. For others, the good periods go on a long time. And the bad periods are few and far between. That's the nature of human experience. Everyone as good and bad periods. And it's why I didn't like the translation happiness. Because there's a sort of a starting point sometimes when you're, you're a Christian is to think you always need to be happy. And life will be happy when you're a Christian. That's, you know, that's not true. Not everyone's happy. Okay? And if you're a Christian, not everyone is happy. Not everyone, when you're a Christian, wakes up with the joys of life and thinks, great, it's a blue sky day. I can go out and conquer the world for the Lord. Not everyone feels like that. Okay? The Lord doesn't promise happiness. But what he does promise is blessings. And we'll come back to those blessings in the Beatitudes. And that made me think about good periods and bad periods in history and bad events and good events and the week after next there's an anniversary which is the 70th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz and one of the things again about reading the Bible and seeing the Old Testament is you really do start to get an appreciation of the history of the Jews and the story of the Jews in the Bible if all you do is read the New Testament, you don't have a real appreciation of God's dealings with the Jews. 
But imagine how awful it must have been 70 years ago to be one of those liberating nurses or soldiers arriving at Auschwitz and seeing the absolute horror of what man can do to man. I remember seeing an old grainy video of a nurse who was one of the first nurses into Auschwitz. And she was explaining how the only way they could keep the victims alive was by giving them glucose. When they arrived, they obviously saw how starving everyone was and they tried to give them their rations and they all started to die. And by accident, someone gave one a sugar cube and their cognitive ability immediately went up and they realised glucose was a way to help people who were ferociously malnourished. But she also spoke about a man who'd come into her hospital who was one of the tractor drivers having to move the dead bodies and he'd gone insane driving the tractor having to do what he had to do of creating the graves. The horror of what man can do to man and the history of Jews, particularly in the present time with what's happening in France, it's really important to remember. There are tragic periods in history. But by contrast, imagine what it must have been like having gone to the Sermon on the Mount. Because the Beatitudes is just part of the Sermon on the Mount. And just fast forward, you go home at the end of the day and say your wife or husband wasn't there and you would say, you would not believe what I heard today. And they'd maybe be preparing a stew or something. You would not believe the message I heard. And they'd say, well, what was special about it? I was told we were blessed. Now in the Old Testament, we did the Ten Commandments last year. And the Ten Commandments are all instructions of what you've got to do. The Beatitudes are different. And as David's reading indicate, indicated, it was the followers of Jesus that he was talking to with the Beatitudes. It wasn't everyone. It was the followers of Jesus. The disciples had made a decision to follow Jesus. So the Beatitudes are for those who are following Jesus. And it's why I said earlier, the starting point for all of this is getting ourselves right with God. Are we followers of Jesus? Do we believe Jesus was the Son of God? Do we believe he died on the cross for our sins? Do we believe he rose three days later? Do we believe he's on the right hand of God now interceding for us? If we do, we're followers of Jesus and the Beatitudes are for us. And they're the blessings that are ours. But there's a requirement in what Jesus expects a follower of his to behave like. The first, blessed are the poor in spirit. In Proverbs, there's almost the opposite of the Beatitudes. Because it says what God doesn't like. So just on the Beatitudes, it said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, and blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Proverbs 6 said, there are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that make haste to run to evil. A false witness who breathes out lies. And one who sows discords amongst his brothers. So the Beatitudes are saying, if you're a follower of mine, 
you're blessed if you're poor in spirit. What does that mean? Well, clearly, over the next year, that's going to be gone into a lot of detail in each of these sort of sermons on the third Sunday. But for me, that means people who are actually recognising their weakness, who are feeling as though they can't do it all themselves, who recognise the need for help. Blessed are those who mourn. Well, I don't think that means people who are mourning in the sense of being beside a gravestone. I think that means blessed are those who mourn for the state of the world, for the enormity of what's going wrong in the world, and people who have that on their heart. People who have that on their heart are blessed. Blessed are the meek. God abhors people who are haughty, think they're it, think they know all the answers. Jesus is saying, blessed are those who are meek, are humble. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, want to be better people, want to find out how they can be righteous, how they can follow Jesus by following his example. Blessed are the merciful. I won't mention a name, but someone said this week, if someone insulted my mother, I'd punch them in the face. Now, I'm not quite sure that's what's being talked about here. Okay? Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Okay? People who recognise the need to try and improve themselves. I need to improve more than most. I always think about that. Blessed are the pure in heart because I recognise I need to be pure in my heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, goes back to someone saying about punching someone who insulted their mother. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. There's nothing more embarrassing. I used to, when I was in the Brethren Church, be one of those who would go into towns and start to preach on street corners. I was one of those nutters. Okay? And trust me, people take the mick. And that verse always used to come back to me. I don't mind if people take the mick. I don't mind even now if people take the mick. My son often takes the mick out of me. He's of that stage. He's doing philosophy and ethics at school. Thinks he knows it all, the rational arguments. So he comes back and says, you're a fundamentalist Christian. You are, Dad. That's nutty. Okay. So we have an adult conversation. I pin him to the floor. That's a, that's a parenting technique you may need to use with James. Or something. It's why I do karate. But um, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. The Beatitudes are all about the blessings you receive if you behave in a certain way. If you commit to behave in a certain way. So you've got to be a follower of Christ. You've got to make sure you're right with Christ. And then you've got to recognise the need to focus on how you behave and how you are. And if you are, the blessings of the Beatitudes are yours. Now, we talked about good times and bad times in human history. Now, when I think of the worst time in, in human experience, I can't think of anything worse than what the Lord went through on the cross. For the Lord, totally innocent, totally pure, totally righteous, to be punished for the sins and wrongdoings of everyone else, and to be punished by his own father and all of that. So he ends out screaming out, Father, Father, why have you abandoned me? That's the worst human experience. What's the best? The best are going to be for those who follow Jesus. Because we know, we have the hope of a, uh, an eternity of love and being with Jesus. That's great. So all that happiness, the good days and the bad days you have on earth, when you wake up depressed, 
wondering how you're going to get out of this hole, why you feel the way you do. If you're a follower of Jesus, you know that you have got an eternity of joy to come and that anything we're experiencing now is going to pile into insignificance in the future. But you've got to get yourself right with God. We've just finished Revelations. Okay? The Revelations talks a lot about the book of life. Now, the book of life is the book where those names are written in those who have decided to follow Jesus. And it's quite tough, this stuff. Because it says if you're not in the book of life, you've got a problem. And that fundamentally is a challenge that each of us have to address in our hearts. Do we know in our hearts that your name, my name, is in the book of life? So when that book of life is opened, I know I believe in Jesus. I believe he was the son of God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose three days later. And I believe he's in heaven. I know my name's in the book of life. Do you? Now, when we were talking about the songs for today, we had a discussion about some wonderful old gospel songs. And that's what I'd like to finish on. And we thought about whether we could get you all up to do some gospel 19th century black Negro, I'm not sure I'm allowed to say that anymore, gospel songs. Okay? And we concluded, no. <laughs> but you will be pleased to know okay, that I'm going to read a couple out to us. Now, the gospel songs for me are wonderful because they bring these truths out of things like the book of life, things like the blessings of God, things like needing to get yourself right with God in a wonderfully inspirational way. And some of you may know, I have, my sister lives in Italy, so I drive down to Italy, and the whole family sleeps on the overnight journey. I put my earphones in, and I listen to old gospel songs. Okay? Tom Jones did a brilliant gospel song album a couple of years ago, which I would thoroughly recommend. We went down to France a couple of weeks ago. I put Handel's Messiah on. Four hours later, I was in Reims. It's great. If ever you're driving a car... Put your headphones on. I think it's legal, so do it overnight. And listen to some great gospel classics, of which this is one. Now, the final bit is, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Now, if you feel like cheering that, I want to hear you. Okay? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. Listen to the words. And the morning breaks, eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the shore, and the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll up is called up yonder. Let us labour for the master. From the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. That when all of life is over. And our work on earth is done. And the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. Now, do you want another? Do you want another? Okay. There wasn't much enthusiasm there, but I'm giving you another. Now, the next one, I've got three, but I'll only give you two because I can see your enthusiasm is waning. Um, now, some of us have a friend called Linda O'Sullivan who does lots of work with Age UK. Linda is a lovely lady with a faith. And she shared a video, which I ended up sharing with my Bible study group, of a lady with very severe dementia. And 
um, one of the things Linda does is um, uses music to help people with dementia to have their memory come back. So this particular incident, and it was in America, was with a black um, lady with dementia and a woman is singing to her this song. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, as he is loved so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me on my way, wanting as a friend to give light and love to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide, He'll wash away my sin. Let his little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. Thou hast bled and died for me. I will henceforth live for thee. Yes, Jesus loves me. Okay. Now, when it comes to blessings... I got into a conversation with some friends the other day and we were talking about Jesus being with us. And I said, one of the enormous blessings we have, even when we're going through these bad periods in our lives, is we know the companionship of Jesus. That God is with us. The Holy Spirit is his gift to us. And it doesn't matter the despair we feel We've got him with us. We're never alone. And so when it comes to the Beatitudes and we think of all of those blessings, how phenomenally blessed are we that Jesus loves us because the Bible tells us so. Thank you very much.